I want to go back to Space Milkshake for a second because oh. just looking at that trailer, it looks like you guys had such a great time. Yeah. I was wondering what your favorite part of filming was. Uh, Robin had us. There's. You see at one point that we're all covered in this kind of green slime, like a little Nickelodeon thing. But um, Robin was never covered in the green slime because he wasn't in the room when the thing that caused us to be covered in green slime happened. Anyway, so he got off scot-free and the slime was freezing cold and it was uncomfortable and super slippery and we just thought that that was woefully unfair. So my favorite part of filming was when pretty much most of the crew and the cast each got cups of green slime and when Robin was finished doing one particular scene, we all just blasted them. <laughs> about them. Billy Boyd is one of the funniest human beings I've ever met. I mean, the man could read the phone book and make you laugh. Yeah, and we had such a good time. The four of us went out for dinner every night. We, we just, we hung out together. We had, we had a really great time. I mean, we'd go to the gym, yoga, and, and just, it was a, just a really gentle, sweet movie to work on in terms of the four cast members got along so well. And at the very end of it, after the rap party, we were going up in the elevator. We weren't going to see each other again. And we all had different flights to catch from Regina, and Billy was on the floor below us, and we were sort of all standing in the elevator expecting this kind of tearful, huggy goodbye, and the doors open, and Billy walks out, and he turns in the hallway, and he goes, it was all shite. <laughs> and bringing our children to something like this. We talked about our kids and we talked about family. How do, I asked them the same question. How do you find a balance between doing all that you do and all this public eye and your family? They, I know they share projects in a way that one of them can try to be home yeah. or nearby. Michael was in the doghouse last year because it didn't turn out that way. <laughs> but how do you do it? I have an incredible husband. We've been married almost 18 years. And, yeah, right? we got married really young. Um, he's, he's, uh, he's very supportive. And I, uh, I've, I have sworn that if I ever felt like Olivia was compromised, I wouldn't take a job or I, I would stop. And, and I literally just turned down a television series last week because I didn't think it would be fair on Olivia. So um, you just choose. You choose the projects that are gonna still give you enough time to come home at night and tuck your children into bed and, and have a normal family life. My weekends are all about family. No work is allowed. And you know we shoot five, six months of the year and then we have time off and then you're just sort of more on regular hours so it's not so hard. And I chose to take as much time off this summer as I could. So it's been good. And I was very lucky in the early years with Olivia because she came to Stargate with me every day. Yeah, that's what I was wondering because Stargate was such a family environment. Yeah, and it was long shooting hours and long, you know, it was a long run. So I, was, she... I was waiting for an episode. You know, you ever see a Pixar movie? They have the Pixar babies. Yeah. I was waiting for waiting that. Waiting for one with all the Stargate babies. Yeah, with all the Stargate yeah. babies. There was a bullet board down. at one point in the office with all the Stargate babies. <laughs> yeah, and so that kind of balance, did you learn that on the Stargate set? Because... I think it's just something that just you... something that developed over Yeah. Time. It's mostly fear. <laughs> it's a fear-based balance, really. I mean, I think any parent can tell you, it's like, you just... You just keep running. <laughs> and you hope that, you know, you're still holding on to everything by the time you get to the end of the track. It's, well, yeah, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of juggling, but um, I'm super happy and my daughter is amazing and super happy and my husband's great and so I feel like I'm, you know, and if that changes, then, then I change what I'm doing or how I'm doing it. Awesome. Well, yeah. thank you so much for coming Thank out. you. A handful of episodes. So was it terrible and torturous to reunite with Martin Wood oh my from God. Sanctuary to do that? Just like, ugh. <laughs> I actually it was very funny because I didn't actually get to see Martin very much. He directed the pilot, and he was so busy producing the show, and I. 
prepped and directed and prepped and directed and prepped and directed three episodes in a row. And Martin was so busy that I would see him occasionally during my prep. I never saw him when I was shooting. And I shot on location. I shot in a Canadian tire store. And I shot in a <laughs> hockey arena. It's so Canadian. It's fantastic. <laughs> and um, I shot uh, on location out at our studio, which is really far away from the offices. So I, I really didn't have to see him that much. So, and I kind of put that in my contract. So it worked out <laughs> I did a panel with him earlier for uh, Primeval New World, and he did a, an impression of a dinosaur sound, and he was fabulous at it, and he said that you might be able to do a dinosaur sound, <laughs> but I forget, because I'm, I'm not very bright. Did you take any dinosaur sounds away from shooting Primeval New World? I, I didn't know. <laughs> this is my dinosaur sound. confidence in my life. Thank you. My question is, when you're working with Richard and Dean Anderson on Stargate, what was your craziest, funniest moment with him that you can think of? Or your favorite, either way. Yeah, pretty much every day. <laughs> um, certainly, my scariest moment was riffing on MacGyver in Solitudes, because I had no idea. That's a really tough question. Oh, are you for we kissed a lot, which was okay. <laughs> it's your fault. You asked me for a good question. I did. And now you stumped me with it. Damn. Um, and getting married was actually really funny. The wedding scene, we were both really dorky. It was like, hey, hey. <laughs> nice, so are you. Thanks. This is awkward, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's just not look at each other during the scene. Okay? <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. My name is Brian Moore, and I was curious, what was it like working with Joe Fleming, Michael Shanks, and uh, Rodney McKay's character on Stargate? Both, all three of them, very different. Um, Michael Shanks is, uh, he's like a brother to me. We're, he's a really dear friend and, and we always had a very sibling kind of relationship. Um, and I just adore him. So, uh, you know, a sibling, in the true sense of sibling rivalry and sibling love and protecting each other to the ends of the earth and then like wanting to beat the crap out of each other. <laughs> yeah, awesome relationship with him. Um, Joe, it was really funny because I felt like I was kind of like out of, a fish out of water because I was going on to his show and it wasn't my show. <laughs> I was like, hey Joe, I hope I... <laughs> Part but, of the Stargate team. Absolutely, absolutely. And it was very funny because Joe would do a couple of things where he, like, at one point he put his foot up on my, uh, uh, in the office set, he put his foot up on my glass coffee table and I looked at him and he went, what? I was like, I outrank you. <laughs> he went, um, I'm a colonel too. And I went, full bird, buddy. <laughs> Take your foot off my coffee table and he was like, <laughs> so it was really fun and um, David Hewlett and I I was so glad that they cast him in Atlantis from we had so much fun having him on SG-1 and his character his what he brought to that character was absolutely brilliant and the fact that they continued it and, and made it part of Atlantis I thought was phenomenal so he's, he's great I can't think of the actor's name. You know do the doctor from uh, Stargate Atlantis, the Scottish dude? I can't think of his name. Right Robert now. Picardo. Oh, Paul McGillian. Yeah. yeah. Paul McGillian. I like how they re put him in the sanctuary. That was awesome. He was, uh, he's just, we wanted to, we, we tried not to do a Stargate cast overload <laughs> at the beginning of Sanctuary, but we wanted to bring as many people that we loved uh, and truly loved working with as we could, sort of subtly in throughout the series, <laughs> peppered it out. So yeah, it was like, 
to finally get Michael on the show and uh, yeah. yeah, stuff like that. It was great. Great. Awesome. Thank you. extra time to ask you questions. Thank you. Um, I'm busy getting my favorite thing about Satchwelly. What's that? It was a show about giving animals and people who were a little bit different than the room a safe place to live the rest of their lives, presumably aside from the conflicts and the rain. So I just wanted to ask, did that come from a place in real life that, you know, with, related to disability or anything like that? A great question. Um, Damien actually wrote the show with that in, in mind. Like the pilot was very much what he wrote. What we sort of mandated um, throughout the course of the show was a real sense of belonging for everyone. And it was really important to us. We have a lot of um, lesbian, gay, transgender friends and we wanted them to be represented. Um, I have a brother. Uh, with a disability, and it was really important to me that that he be represented in a way that you know where it's like he may not have been validated walking down the streets of Toronto because he looked a bit weird and he acted a bit weird, but he was an amazing human being. And so we all came from a place where we had a personal experience with people who had been marginalized, and that's basically what the show. I'm getting kind of emotional. Sorry. Um, that's what the show is about, is not marginalizing anyone and making everyone feel a sense of belonging and worth and value. And um, with our own personal experiences, it was really important to us that that, that come across. fan she's she's taken great inspiration from your work and uh, so this, this is sort of her question but uh, oh and sorry also uh, you 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 say that uh, you know sanctuary fans are kind of a, a breed of their own um, but just from our experiences with you this convention and like extending this question period and just your energy and the rest of the cast's energy uh, we just want to say on behalf of sanctuary fans or at least we sanctuary fans that uh, the sanctuary cast is a breed of its own Tesla, and uh, she just wanted to know, since this, the, unfortunately the show was cut off, uh, where did you see uh, Magnus and Tesla's relationship going after the series? We, I think um, what we had thought was, if we'd gone into a season five, that he would very much be a part of the new sanctuary, and I think that there would probably be some awkward kind of Helen Tesla moments, like, should we, should, well, oh, that was awkward, weird, okay, yeah, I kissed you because I thought I was dying, go away, you know, <laughs> so have a bit of fun with that dynamic, because I think ultimately at the end of the day, they're two, like, amazing friends, um, but we, I think we could have had a lot of fun playing. It's a shame we don't get to see it. I know, right? <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, and to, to your question. I do say that Sanctuary fans are a breed apart and Stargate fans, and I think sci-fi fans in general are a breed apart from any fandom. I have never met a group of more socially aware, socially connected, generous, gracious people, and I really think that it is specific to this genre. I don't know what it is that this genre brings out in people and all of us collectively in spirit, but people who have become friends from around the world for you know, a singular, we love Stargate, or we love Babylon 5, or we love, you know, Battlestar, like, and then there's that connection, and then suddenly there's more of a connection, and you support each other, and when people are going through a hard time, fandom looks out for each other. I'm, I'm gobsmacked. I think it's absolutely phenomenal. And so to be a part of this genre, and to witness, and, and to also be a part of fandom myself, it's phenomenal. I can't say enough great things about not only the Sanctuary and Stargate fans, but sci-fi fans in general. What a phenomenal group of people. And it's events like this where like, you get to hook up with people you haven't seen or have never met but have talked to on the internet for years. It's freaking great, man. <laughs>